Hello and welcome to the British Dapper and today we're looking at blazers, jackets and sport coats. So today we're looking at blazers, jackets and sports coats. So the difference between that and a suit is that a suit is made from the same materials. So the jacket and the trousers or even a waistcoat is made of the same matching material and is, provides a whole ensemble. Whereas a blazer, a jacket or a sports coat is an individual item and should be worn as such. So therefore don't try to match the colours. It won't really work because there are different shades and uh, so it's a little bit confusing on the eye. So you're better off looking at contrasts. So for example, if you've got a darker jacket, wear lighter trousers. And if you're wearing a lighter jacket, wear darker trousers. So let's just talk about a suit for a few seconds, just to get some comparisons. So a suit is made from the same material it's designed to be um, very formal and used in formal settings. And the materials are quite lightweight and very refined. Uh, for example, they generally are constructed of worsted uh, wools. Um, they have silks, mohair potentially in them and other fibers to make them more refined. Whereas blazers, jackets and sport coats are designed to be a little bit more harder wearing and more for play. So they are generally with thicker materials um, and they still use wools, uh, silks, cashmere, all sorts of different little materials in them to give a different texture or feel to them. So let's start off by discussing a blazer. Now blazers have been around for a lot of years and they are considered to be a step between wearing a formal suit and much more casual wear. So uh, generally a suit is dark or sombre in colour. You get the very similar feel from a blazer. Now a black blazer or a navy blazer are the preferred and more common uh, types of blazers you'll see. A lot of sports teams will wear blazers and the military in civilian uh, wear will wear a blazer with their regimental badge on and um, or a team badge and uh, that is quite common to see even in this day and age. But a blazer can also be uh, in other colours. So for example, it could be in maroon, it could be in dark green, light blue. There are striped blazers as well for universities or boating events. Um, so they do come in different styles as well. You can have single breasted or double breasted. Um, peak lapels, notched lapels. The point I'm trying to make is that you can use them to be quite formal in that you could wear a, wear them with a tie, a uh, shirt, uh, grey flannel trousers and black shoes and that's quite a formal look. Uh, you can also wear them with jeans or chinos or uh, lighter coloured shoes or suede shoes don't wear a tie with them and they can be that bridge between not too formal and more casual. Ideally if you're going somewhere and you want to look a little bit smarter than normal you can put a blazer on and it lifts it a bit. Blazers are I would say instantly recognisable and some organisations particularly in the UK use blazers as a way of identifying their staff corporately. For example, in this country, we have uh, holiday companies called Butlins and they're famous for their red coats. Their red coats are their entertainments team. In 
this country you also have a company called Pontins. Now they wear royal blue blazers and that is their entertainment teams. And they're instantly recognisable if you're on a holiday camp and you see somebody with a red blazer and you want to speak to somebody, you know you can approach them. Similarly, um, when it comes to uh, teams, you can recognise the Oxford rowing team from the, team, the Cambridge rowing team because of the colours of their blazers as, as well as the badges that they wear. Now then, if we want to step from blazers, we could also look at jackets. Not to be confused with suit jackets, um, they are more relaxed in fit. They are normally different colours or patterns. For example, they're checked or they are, uh, for example, hound's tooth um, patterns. They can look very formal or informal. Generally though, uh, jackets are ideally heavy wooled um, or to the other extreme in the summer months, you might find them in linen or cotton or with even with silk involved to uh, lighten it up and make it more wearable in the summer months. But essentially it looks the same. Now, the next thing we go, come to is sports coats. Now, sports coats are historically made from the fraternity of hunting and fishing and country wear. So they are normally, for example, a tweed construction or a heavier wooled construction. Uh, they tend to mimic the local environment so for example heathers and moorlands so you tend to find a lot of greens blues browns those sort of colors involved now they also have a more relaxed fit uh, because they're designed for active wear um, so you can imagine that if it was too restrictive you wouldn't be able to use them for that function although that's historically and in this day and age, they tend to be cut a little bit more uh, tighter fit. And uh, it's not uncommon to see people wearing them in the town as well as in the countryside. They're a great statement piece. And uh, you can wear them with chinos or jeans or a pair of slack trousers. And they look really good. Uh, in this case, I'm wearing one and I've got a waistcoat on. The shirt, white can be a funny colour, so it can be too, too bright. So in this case, I've worn a cream coloured shirt and that lightens it up a little bit and makes it less formal. So the types of materials that are used, for example, mohair is one. Um, now mohair, is made from an angora goat and it's the fibres from the actual fur that they will use heavy wools, uh, Shetland wool, um, they will use refined wools for example merino, um, you might find cashmere. Now cashmere is actually a region in the north of India and uh, it's made from a goat again and it's from the cashmere or the pashmina goat. Um, very labour intensive in gathering this because it's only taken from around the neck area and the underbelly of the goat and the fibres have to be separated from the outer coat from the inner coat and it's the inner coat that's actually used so, so you can see it that's why it's more expensive when you see cashmere in, uh, introduced into a garment so the other thing to consider is silks are used as well because silk tends to make things a little bit softer and also cooler as well. Very effective in the summer months. Along with linens and cottons, they can be used as well. So just to recap on these three things, okay. So for example, a blazer is more formal. 
Uh, jacket is really uh, describes anything in between that and country wear. So it can be really well done. If you're going out for an evening, you don't want to wear a suit, but you want to dress up a little bit, you put a jacket on with a nice pair of trousers and you're going to look really good. Uh, the other extreme is the country wear. So therefore, we're now then talking about sports coats or sports jackets. Um, and that is where you get more of a rural feel to it and it's more rugged, hard wearing. You can wear it with jeans, chinos, pair of brogues, and, uh, and that gives a completely different vibe and, and really effective. So that ends our little tutorial today. Um, as before, if you want to subscribe, please do so, feel free. Um, if you liked it, give us a thumbs up. Um, if you'd like to make a comment, please do so. We always uh, welcome constructive comments. And you never know if you say something, we may use it in the next video or in the next series of videos. So until next time, take care.